Greetings, everybody. Nick DiVirgilio here, hanging out at the Sweetwater Video Studio with the fabulous John Wooten. Welcome. Nice to Thank see you, man. Nick. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming and hanging out with us. We're going to talk some rudimental drumming, yeah. maybe some paradiddles to be exact. But before we get into that, would you mind playing something for us? You, would you like something entertaining? For maybe, sure. Maybe fun? Definitely. Kind of like this drum, in this drum fun? It's fantastic. It's a fun man. drum. Totally. So you got to play something fun. Let's do it. Well, I'll try. All right. Watch out. Well, John, that was awesome to watch. It was really cool standing right next to you here because the volume of the drum, yeah. hear the power behind what yeah. you're doing. And your gut, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. And the, the tricks, the, the, the entertainment value is all fantastic. Really good stuff. You're saying all the right things. You know, yeah. I've done this before. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been teaching this a long time uh -huh. and we're talking rudiments now. You've, you've lived in that world. You were an expert at it. So what do you want to talk about first when we're getting into rudiments in the drum corps world and like the snare drum world here? Fundamentals. Okay. You know, when you watch a video when you, on YouTube or Instagram or something, you think it doesn't matter what it is, it's extraordinarily good, right? Mm -hmm. Just go, oh my gosh, that's so amazing. You know, but that has to start with fundamentals, no matter what it is. Sure. It's got to start with fundamentals. So fundamentals of the rudiments, but even more basic, the technique that you develop or that you need to develop the rudiments and then take them beyond that. Okay. That's what's important. Okay, with all that being said, can you give us some examples then? How about we talk paradiddles? Let's do it. You know, we've got so much time. So let's just talk paradiddles. There's four paradiddle rudiments, not counting the flam paradiddle, just the, with singles, no flams. The single paradiddle, the double paradiddle, triple paradiddle, and the paradiddle diddle. So what, let's do this. Let's, let's, uh, let's play two of each of them. Okay. But before we get that, what I want to really stress is to play the, to, get, to work on your taps. The, the stuff down low, because this is where it's really important on drum set. We call them inner beats here, right? On drum set, call them? Ghost notes. Ghost notes. That's what we're working on. The definition of the ghost notes, and then the flow of the accent. So, you know, there's five strokes, real quick. Rebound stroke, up stroke, down stroke, taps, or ghost notes, yep. and a buzz. Okay. With that, you can play every rudiment. That's your ABCs. Okay, so it's real important with these paradiddles, you, ha you have all of these except the buzz. Unless you want to add a buzz. What I want everybody to watch is the flow of the stroke, especially the upstroke and then the downstroke. What's important is that the upstroke flows and the downstroke stops on a dime and it doesn't come back up. So that all your taps or then ghost notes are even. Okay. And this is good for every drummer. Get on a pad and do this. You really need to do it. Try this. Try playing. Two single paradiddles, two double paradiddles, two triple paradiddles, two triple paradiddles, and two paradiddle diddles with one accent at the beginning of each root. Okay. To begin with, that's the starting point. So it goes something like this. I'll do it kind of slow. Now notice those two paradiddle diddles were both on the right hand. So it's also important to lead with the left. Okay. Drummers need to be ambidextrous. Totally. So always practice leading with your left. Let me do it again. I'm going to start on the left, but I'll go a little faster. Okay. All right? And then you just want to work on speed. Now, maybe you know, work on that. If you metronome, I call the metronome the ultimate discipliner. Because what do we want to do as humans? We want to go faster. Right. 
If you're a human being, you're going to want to go, hey, I want to play that fast. Okay, but take your time getting there. Work on the technique and make sure it's smooth. So just take that metronome, bump it up a couple beats per minute, mm -hmm. and then do, until, you, until you get uncomfortable, and then work on that tempo. Okay. Okay, but eventually you want to get here. So, like the double paradiddle, we did it with one accent. We could put two accents, the first two notes, okay. first and third, and then the first and fourth note. Or we can even accent the diddle. You can accent the second note of the diddle. Okay, whoa, then it's not a double paradiddle. No, maybe not. It is, but it isn't, you know. It's being, still the same sticking, you're just moving sticking. the accents. And being creative. Right. Now we're being creative. All right, so it goes maybe something like this. Everyone sounds different. Right. But I could really see how the left was leading. The, it goes back and forth with the accents and the hands, and the, the sort of lead does it automatically. Well, double paradiddles alternate. Right. So one's on the right, one's on the left. Right. So, and those, so those accents are constantly alternating. So you have to keep that in mind. Nice. Yeah, but each one, you get a different sound. My favorite one is the first and fourth note. If you put that on the kit, is pretty cool. Put this sticking on the kit, just this. So right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, left. You're playing triplets, right? Just take any of these paradiddle rooms, as we're going to do in a minute, just put the right hand on the hi-hat, complement it with the bass drum. you got some serious funk going on. Nice. Yeah. Well, John, before we transitioned into you playing behind a regular four-piece kit, can I ask you a couple of questions about the drums? Of course. Pearl drums and the feeling you get with these drums. You've been playing Pearl for a really long time. The school you teach at uses Pearl gear. What is it about this that just sounds good and gives you that sound and feel you need? The consistency in the drum. And of course, I've, been, I've seen all the changes and it just gets better and better and better. How, how much have these drums changed in 30 years? I mean, is the construction basically the same or is it a, a wide, huge difference? Well, I'm old school. Okay. I was back in the day with conventional drums when they were just figuring out the uh, free floating shell. When I taught the Phantom Regiment, they were just coming out, we used conventional drums, and then we put cuts in the drum, and drums were caving in on us, because we were putting so much tension with these Kevlar heads. Mm -hmm. That's when they came up with the free floater. Free floater was to combat the bulletproof drum heads. And now, and they got these drums sounding really, really nice, with the carbon fiber. And, sure. Yeah. Boy, and you get a big, huge drum core and a, a, a big group of guys playing these drums and the sound can be just massive. Exactly. And I don't know if you can hear the power of this drum. I mean, you can Standing hear Standing right drum. next to it yeah. here, it's definitely got power to it. Yeah. yeah. But it's not fatiguing to the ear. You, you're no. cracking those rim shots and stuff. They're definitely loud, but it's not like some crazy high end that's hurting or anything like that. It's just a nice crack. John, you're a longtime educator. How is this and why is this important to a student who's going to get behind a drum kit? How do they correlate with each other? Yes, this is very important to me, the fundamentals for um, musicians. I'm a musician first, percussionist second, okay. rudimental drummer third. You know, So that is really what's really most important is that this serves my musical purposes, my musical outlets, my tastes, whatever, right? So with my students, this is very important and that they take this to the point of application on the drum set, the point of practicality. All right. Let's see how it works on the drum kit. All right, let's go. All right. John, that was a really cool performance on the snare. So now you're behind the kit. We're talking paradiddle rudiments mainly. Show us what you, what you got on the kit here. Please. All right, here we go. We're going to start in a 6-8 time signature. Let's see.
So can you kind of break down what you were when you were playing there? Yeah, sure. I start out, you know, so some of these rudiments, first of all, apply to the drum set. People ask me all the time, so you're thinking about rudiments to put in there? I said, no, not really. I just found out that like the double paradiddle is great for a bimbe groove or a naningo. So it fits right in. It's basically almost exactly what you're doing for that rudiment. So that, that lays well. But the real important thing is, is the technique that you get from practicing these rudiments, how it applies to drum set. Maybe I'll take just like single paradiddles, and we can move the diddle around, but if you're talking about two singles and one diddle, you can change the diddle, put it in the middle, put it at the beginning. That was a little bit of a rhyme thing you just did right there, change the diddle, put it in the middle? There you go. I like it. Poet and I don't know it. <laughs> All right, show us what you got. So let's just do a paradiddle. Let's do just a single paradiddle, and then I'll orchestrate it different, and I'll move the diddle around, throw in a couple bass drums, but all we're doing is two taps and a diddle with an accent. One thing I'd say is you start with the basic paradiddle, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. That's the basic rudiment. But now you morph, morph it into something else. Move the accent, move the diddle, orchestrate it on different drums. What are the possibilities? But check it out, paradiddles. So that's just a few examples using single paradiddles, right? right? So let's talk about the double paradiddle. Okay. You know, six notes. It's a triple meter. You know, we can talk about six eight. It's you know, it works great in that bimbe as a ningo, and uh, you can move the accent around. So that's the thing you want to do. So when you once you learn your rudiments, start moving accents around, and then people, well, someone say, well, that's no longer a double paradiddle. Well, it is. It's it's a morphed double paradiddle. We just changed it. That's the whole idea. The whole idea is to change it and, you know, be creative. That's great for your independence, too, right? You kind of get your, stop thinking just in certain terms. You're, you're, it frees up your body to do that. Exactly, stuff, right? Exactly. All right. So a double paradiddle, if I, if I just put the accent on the downbeat, I could put the accent on the first two beats. I could put the accent on the second beat. I could put it on the first and the third beat, you know, and just keeping the same sticking for now. So this is how that might sound. Yeah, it sounds like the beat turns around. It sounds like all kinds of different things, but you, you kept the same sticking the whole time. Exactly. So, so now if I put that on the hi-hat, now you got just that little simple thing, but I'll put all the bass drum, uh, all the accents on the bass drum with the right hand. a few bass drums on the left foot on the left hand too but for okay. forgive me for that I, I will forgive okay. you for sure I had this discussion lately uh, with students you know every time you make a mistake they stop I said don't stop keep oh, going you got to keep going keep course, going yeah. I mean what's a good musician is they don't stop they keep the groove going in fact man I've heard so many drummers you know make mistakes and they make them sound good right like you meant to do it meant to do it right yeah and the, but it's a mistake so on a snare drum a double paradiddle and a paradiddle diddle sound the same I'll do it on my leg Double paradiddle, double paradiddle, paradiddle, diddle, paradiddle, diddle. They sound the same on one surface. You put it here, you got something totally different. So I'll do double paradiddles and paradiddle diddles. Yeah, you get into some really funky beats when you add the kick right. drums in there and stuff. You kind of really kind of change it all around and morph it into some really fun sounding stuff. Yeah, so if you listen to, you know, some of my favorite drummers and be because of this, you know, and you realize that's what they're doing, you know, like Dave Garibaldi or Vinny Caliuta, all those ghost notes and things that they're doing with that, that's basically what this is. They're just orchestrating it differently. But do you, do you find that the paradiddle is, is 
one of the, the greatest rudiments out of, I mean, how many rudiments really are there? Is there a finite number that there's this many rudiments? Well, PAS has a list of 40, you know, we have the 13 essential rudiments, the 26 standard rudiments that you should know. Right. And then PAS came out with a list around 1980 or so with the 40 rudiments. And now, of course, we have all the hybrids. So here's just flam paradiddles, and then I'm going to put it on the, the hat, but I'll, what I want to really make sure is all my snare drum, all those ghost notes are even, you know, because if you practice on a pad, and you're not getting that, you're not accomplishing that, then when you get on the drum set, it's like putting a microscope on the rudiment, and you can really tell if that's happening or not. Sure. You know, so, flam paradiddles. That last little thing you did right there between the ride and the crash and the snare reminded me of Tony Williams just for a second. Tony Williams! <laughs> Tony, I'm glad you brought his yeah. name up because I've watched hours, listen to hours and hours and days, months of Tony Williams, master of this stuff. So the flam paradiddles, yeah, try that at home. Playing flam paradiddles on the cymbals and try to keep all those ghost notes sounding the same. You could do it, you know, I could do it with any flam rudiment, flam accents or uh, Swiss triplets inverted flam taps, anything. And it has to be, you're looking for that stuff. Pay attention to the little stuff. I always say pay attention to the little things to make the big things better. But if you pay attention to the big things all the time, the little things can get ignored. But if you pay attention to the little things, the big things are automatically gonna get better. You know, but that's it, that's the little stuff. So you could put it on the toms too. Here, let me do, let me just do some flam rudiments. Can I do some flam rudiments? I think you should do some flam rudiments. All right. We're just gonna we're just gonna go around do some flam root of this. Being an educator for so long, are you still learning? Even though you're teaching all the time, are you still learning after this many years of being I, an educator? I am a forever student. I, I you know, I, and I, more so now than before because I'm not as stubborn. I'm learning every day. I learn from my students every day, you know. And uh, man, when I when I learned when I learned how to put my ego aside, I grew, you know, tenfold as a musician. Is that something you try to relate to students to? Absolutely. I say, man, when you when you stop learning, you're dead. I mean, because that's the truth. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, keep learning. And there's so much out there to learn. Don't be afraid to learn, you know? Well, before we close out this video, do you want to get into a few more things before we say goodbye here? Let's do a little rudimental thing. How about a little crazy army, a la Steve Gadd? Love it. Okay, so we take direct rudimental application into the drum set. So John, this is all fantastic stuff. Let us know, let the crowd know out there that's watching, what else do you have going on? Oh man. Because it's a lot, right? Yeah, my plate's full, and I love it that way. I teach at the University of Southern Mississippi, been there 30 years, and uh, I have a 40-piece steel pan orchestra, big uh, steel band, and um, percussion ensemble, uh, Brazilian samba band, 
uh, and of course a full studio, and then we have a you know jazz department and everything. But we teach everything. Tony Michelli is teaching vibraphone uh, adjunctly uh, at, at the school, so uh, we got a lot going on. It sounds like it. That's yeah. great. Great orchestra, everything. And you've written books? You have some rudimental yeah. books that are out there? I have a couple of books. One's the Drummer's Rudimental Reference Book that is used by many, many schools throughout the U.S. and, and around the world. And then I have one uh, more recent called the Rudimental Remedies, Dr. Throwdown's Rudimental Remedies. And it's got tracks. It's got 951 play-along tracks. Wow. So, yeah. That's a lot. It's a lot of stuff. Every exercise has a track, and they're all set in seven different tempos. That's great. So, but it's on fundamentals, but also how to take those fundamentals and be creative with them. Yeah, because you're playing music eventually, right? Exactly. You're going to get to the point where you're actually playing music, not just practicing just the, root, the basics the whole time. It needs to be applicable. Right. And practical. Beautiful. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks so much for coming and hanging out with us. And this has been great. You got a lot of good Thank stuff you. going on with Pearl here at Sweetwater, showing off some great new gear, some of the orchestral stuff, the B&O mm -hmm. stuff that Pearl's uh, bringing to the forefront, and it's, it's fantastic gear. So thank you so much for hanging out and showing us and, and teaching us a little about yourself and your drumming. It's, it's great stuff. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's great to meet you. You too. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody.